Welcome to It's Your Case, presented by VetCT.com. I'm Amy Zaltzman, your radiologist on demand for this week. We continue with this month's theme of pulmonary patterns. It's time to take a breath. Our journey ends with the four broad classifications of pulmonary patterns. As a reminder, it's always important to keep these findings in the context of the patient history and exam. A brief commentary is included after the case about the pattern. Today's example is a three to four month old male castrated domestic short hair cat presenting for a five day history of difficulty breathing. Approximately a week ago, he presented for difficulty breathing, vomiting, and eating elastic bands. At that time, abdominal radiographs did not reveal any evidence of obstruction. He was put on a prescription of amoxicillin and clavulonic acid for increased respiratory rate and effort. He presented early today for an appetence of three days duration. On exam, there was marked respiratory effort. Severe alveolar opacities are identified in the right middle and caudal subsegment of the left cranial lung lobe, as well as in the right cranial and cranial subsegment of the left cranial lung lobe. We observe that there is an air bronchogram in each of these areas and that there is lobar margination of the middle lung segments. Additionally, there is an incomplete alveolar pattern in the craniovental aspects of the caudal lung lobes. There is sparing of the caudodorsal third of the lungs in the lateral views. On the ventrodorsal view, we observe an inward deviation of the caudal left side thoracic wall. However, no rib fractures are identified. The overlying soft tissues of this region are within normal limits. The cardiac silhouette and pulmonary vasculature are difficult to describe due to the extensive changes observed within the lungs. There are no abnormalities identified in the pleural space or mediastinum. On the ventrodorsal view, there is mild cranial displacement of the left side of the diaphragm. The structures of the musculoskeletal system and cranial abdomen are age appropriate. Our conclusions for this patient are extensive severe alveolar pattern that is predominantly cranioventrally distributed and involving nearly the entire left lung. Our differential diagnoses include aspiration pneumonia, bacterial pneumonia or bronchopneumonia, acute respiratory distress syndrome or ARDS, severe hemorrhage pulmonary contusion relating to trauma, pulmonary hemorrhage relating to coagulopathy, or severe pulmonary edema, which can either be cardiogenic or non-cardiogenic, but this is considered less likely. Based on the cranioventral distribution and historical vomiting, bronchopneumonia is prioritized. Aspiration pneumonia is a subset of bronchopneumonia. The inward deviation of the left side caudal thoracic wall is not likely to be, is most likely, excuse me, related to decreased volume of the left lung, and in the absence of overt radiographic evidence of trauma, it is likely due to the decreased volume. A congenital malformation cannot be entirely excluded as well. Alveolar pattern is termed as such due to the disease that impacts the alveoli. The alveoli are saturated with material, which can include fluid, cells, pus, or blood. Due to this saturation, there is marked opacification of the lung that results in effacement of the vessels. If you recall from last week's discussion, in contrast to an unstructured interstitial pattern where the vessel margins are partially visible, 
Here, we see that the vessel margins are completely obscured by the pattern of the lungs. The typical source of contrast that we observe within the lungs is really only limited to the large airways, and this creates a pattern called air bronchogram. When the extent of the alveolar pattern is so severe, as we observe in in several of these lung lobes, we see discrete margination of the lung, lung lobe itself called lobar margination. If the entirety of the lung itself was defined, then we would have what's called a lobar sign. This contrasts with pleural fissure lines, which can define the boundary of the lung lobe, but this arises from the pleural space and is typically associated with the presence of fluid within the pleural space. Alveolar patterns in many circumstances are part of a range of severity of parenchymal disease that often can begin as unstructured interstitial pattern. In this category, it represents the severe end of the spectrum. Be sure to view the full report associated with this case. Thanks for listening, and remember, it's your case, so please post your questions on social media.